Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Look back over your life a moment and give Him thanks. That when you put your trust in Him, you didn't know how you were going to get through it. But you made it. Give the Lord the glory. Give the Lord the praise. Give the Lord the honor, the appreciation, the gratitude. Hallelujah. Any grateful people here today? Bless the name of Jesus. So glad that all of you are here worshiping with us on this beautiful Sunday morning. Welcome to all of our campuses and all our online church. We appreciate you very much. That's a great song, isn't it? I should have wrote that song. Or I could I could have wrote every word of that song because that's just how it is. You trust him and he makes a way where there is no way. And he's so faithful. Is he not faithful? Aren't you a little bit? I don't think God's into us being filled with shame, but every once in a while, I think I, aren't you a little bit ashamed you didn't trust him more? Looking back, the stuff you really worried about, the stuff you really just almost gave up about, God had it, victory on the other side. He made a way. And you say, well, you don't know what I'm going through now, but he's the same God. He's the same God. He knows what he's doing. Turn around and greet two or three people and welcome them to church this morning. Smile at them or give them a fist. Bless you. Good to see you here this morning. Praise the name of Jesus. I love the Lord, don't you? If you have your Bibles, I'm going to open mine to the book of Psalms. I want to go to Psalms 18. Psalms chapter 18. Uh, a flat. Where are you going? When peace like a river attended my way when sorrows like sea billows roll whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say it is well it is well with my soul. I love the I love the second verse. My sin, oh the bliss of this glorious thought. My sin, not in part, but the whole. He took all my sin mess. What did he do? He nailed to that old rugged cross and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It is well, it is well with, my soul. with my soul. Oh, it, it is, is well, it is well with my soul. Take it up. And Lord, haste the day when my faith shall be sight. The clouds be rolled back as a scroll.
whatever, whatever you're afraid of, whatever you're dreading, whatever you're facing as an uncertainty, whatever dread has plagued your life, it is well. With my soul, with my soul, it is well. It is well with my praise if you believe hallelujah praise the Lord going to Psalms 18 and verse 29 blessed be the name of the Lord I love those old hymns Psalms 18 and verse 29 is where I want to read this is one of the great songs that David wrote. The whole song is filled with powerful, powerful lyrics. But let's, let's focus in now on, let's back up to verse 28. For you will light my lamp, the Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. For by you I can run through a troop. Everybody say, by him. Now say, I can. I can. Say, by him, by him. I, can. I can. Say it again. By him. By him. You say, I'm really facing some overwhelming odds. By him, by him. I, can. I can. Run through, Run through. a troop. And that's where we stop. We, we just try to get through stuff. That's not what he said. Verse 2, the second part of that verse, in verse 29. And by him... By my God, I can leap over a wall. That's what I want to preach on. Now, while you're in your Bible, I want you to go over to flip over to 2 Samuel chapter 22. Because this is not the first time this text is found in the Bible. In in, in verse, in chapter 22, we're given the context through which it, the song was birthed. We know that David wrote 73 of the Psalms, at least we know, the book of Psalms. He wrote 73 of those Psalms. Moses wrote many of them. And there are others that are listed that are credited with the writings of the Psalms. But this certainly was one of the Psalms that David wrote. And what is powerful about it is the backdrop, the background, the setting of it. Verse chapter 22 of 2 Samuel in verse 1, then David spoke to the Lord the words of this song on the day when the Lord had delivered him from the hand of all of his enemies and from the hand of Saul. And I don't have time to read the whole thing, but we'll, we'll go over to verse 30. Here, here's part of the song that he wrote on that day. Verse 30, for by you I can run against a troop, and by my God I can leap over a wall like the King James. By you I can run through a troop, and by my God I can leap over a wall. And then... Go one more chapter over, chapter 23, verse 1. Now, these are the last words of David. He's referring to the previous chapter. These are the last words of David. He's dying. It goes on to say, he lived a full, to a full age, full good age of 70. That doesn't sound very long nowadays, but that was a good long life back then. And really, the psalmist David said, all you're promised is 70 years. And then anything beyond that is bonus. Thank God for it. Don't go around complaining that your left knee is hurting all day and your right arm, you can't. 
be thankful. You're on credit. If you're over 70, God's being good to you. Turn to somebody and smile at them and say, you ought to really be grateful, you gray-headed thing. Look at what the Lord has done. Man. I wasn't in my notes, but I thought I'd bless you with it. Psalms 18, according to scholars, is the last psalm and song that David ever wrote. He's on his deathbed. You read of it in Chronicles, by the way. It takes you into the bedroom where he's dying on his deathbed. And he writes the song. He's, he's looking back over his life. 2 Samuel 23 is he is dying. And he writes in that chapter, looking back over his life, reminiscing. It's the last recorded song that David had. It's what I'm preaching on. David's last song of victory. And when he starts thinking about the full life that he, his days, the text puts it like this. He was full of days. And I looked that up. I wanted to know what that meant. That's a Bible phrase you read a lot of times. So and so died and he was full of days. What does that mean? One translation said it means that his days, really what life is about is having full days. And in other words, it wasn't just, it wasn't just getting along and going along and, and, and waiting to die. But he lived a life that was full of days, 70 years. And really what that means is full of friends and full of foes. Full of good days and full of bad days. Full of love and full of betrayal. This is called life. Full of palaces and full of caves. Full of valleys and full of mountains. Full of love and full of hate. Full of miracles and full of messes. All we want is blessing, blessing, blessing. You're not living a full life. You don't even appreciate the blessings till you go through the messes. Full. This is the song that comes to mind at the end of a 70-year-old spiritual giant. Full of failures and full of victories. And he looks back on the end, and I mean, this is serious. You're not playing games. This is a man who's famous. This is a man who's wealthy. This is a man who has seen it all, experienced it all, lost it all, got it all back. He has been through some stuff in his life. And in this text, it's the end. It's the, the context of writing this song is He's pulling the sheets up to his nose. He's so cold and it describes his death. He's so cold that his feet are cold. His body is cold. I don't even want to tell this in the public. And they go and get a young girl and get her to get into bed and not to do anything, just to get in the bed to warm him, just trying to get him warm. He's so cold and he's dying. And he throws her out and says, give me a pen and a piece of paper. And he starts writing words to a song, his last song as he's reminiscing, he's reflectively looking back over his life. He's, he's going down memory lane. I could see him. He's going down memory lane and he's thinking about all that God has brought him through. Thinking about the battles and the joys and the sorrows that he's gone through. And it's the testimony of a dying man that God has been faithful to. And he says, by thee. By the help of my God, I, have, I, I can run through a troop. David's testimony is my testimony and is your testimony. I'm going to put it in my words. In other words, David said the Holy Ghost has gotten me through some things. And I want to praise him for that. When I'm looking back over my life. I can't help but remember the ups, the downs, the bad things, the terrible things. But the Lord, by him, I got through it. It didn't kill me. It didn't destroy me. It didn't wipe me out. I got through it. Praise the Lord. I really think we ought to take a moment and celebrate the things that God just got us through. I'm not trying to hype you up. 
But we really ought to reflect sometimes and look back at how dangerous situations were. Had it not been for the Lord on our side, he got you through. He starts having these flashbacks of, 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 of fortune and failure, of hills and valleys and victories and defeats. When I think of the goodness of God and all that he's done for me, I could see him. He says, all I can say is God got me through it. I had troops assembled against me, but God got me through it. He didn't take me away from it. He made me go through it. He didn't lift me out of it. He got me through it. I'll never understand why I had to go through it. I didn't then, but I do now. He comes to remind you in some of your darkest days of your life, God has already got you through it. Through sickness. Were any of you sick and wondered if you'd ever get well? Through dark nights. Through trials. Through tragedies. Ooh, you ought to get happy right there because the tragedy was terrible and horrible when the phone call came, but you made it through it. Through bad news, through heartbreaks, through addictions, through depression. I think it wasn't a singular troop. I think it was a multitude of troops. But if you live for God anytime, you're going to have multiple things that God, by his grace, brought you through. He brought me through that. And before I go any further, we ought to give God, he brought me through that a praise, that kind of praise. Give God a, you got me through it, praise. Hallelujah. I've been doing that all week. I had to preview on this sermon. He got me through that. He got me through that. He got me through that. Why would I doubt him now? I could see him laying there reminiscing on his deathbed. And as he knows, I mean, these are not, he's not in the last weeks of his life. He's not in the last week, days of his life, the last moment. He, he is down. It's not the shadows of death. He's down to it. He's about to leave this world. And all he can do is reflect back on all God has brought him through. He brought me through a bear attack. He brought me through a lion attack. He brought me through a crazy giant attack. He brought me through my father-in-law trying to kill me attack. He brought me through through the death of my son. He brought me through the rape of my daughter. He brought me through my own personal failure. He brought me through all my enemies. He brought me through scandals. He brought me through stuff that I didn't think I would survive. His, his breathing is laboring. <laughs> he brought me through. That's how I want to go out. Hallelujah. Shouting with a song of victory. Devil, you lost in the blood won. Calvary won. Jesus won. Woo. You're going to pick a last song. Is it going to be a... Pity city. I'm so pitiful. I'm dying. Well, hurry up. Let me hold your nose. Or are you going to go out saying he brought me through and, and he's not just going to bring me through. He's about to take me over. Hallelujah. Over the chilly Jordan, over into a city called New Jerusalem. Why do I scream? Why can't I calm, calmly teach the word of God? But I can't, honestly, I can't think of a better thing to close out with leaving this old world Shouting over every, rubbing in the devil's face every victory God brought you through. Every attack hell sent, he brought you through. And you say this is a waste of time. It's not a waste of time to gather and throw our hands up and remember and reflect and flash back on days when you were so depressed. He brought you through that divorce. He brought you through that funeral. He brought you through putting your boy in the grave or your husband or your, my God, he's been faithful. It is well with my soul. By thee, I have run through 
a truth. Everything life hit me with, he got me through it. But the problem is, too often that's all people want to do is get through it. But if you look at the story of the 10 lepers, he brought 10 of them through the isolation, the leprosy, the horror, the fear of being diagnosed with a terminal disease, of being uh, quarantined from your family, never to live with them in the same house again, the treatment of screen, having to scream unclean, unclean, if anyone got within a certain distance of you. Can you imagine the, the psychological damage that was done to these people who watched their body deteriorate and they felt like animals, they felt like freaks physically as fingers would fall off. But the 10 lepers, nine of them were content to just get through it. I got healed. I got healed. I got through it. But God didn't want them to just get through it. He wanted them to get over it. And when that one leper turned back and he went back and gave Jesus the praise, he said, because you've done this, you understand. I didn't want you to just get through it. I wanted you to get over it. You were made whole. I make you whole. I make you, the, the PTSD is over. The mental anguish and fear of it coming back is over. The torment of the enemy that wants to destroy you with what you've been through, it is over. It's like all that does is fills you with gratitude and praise, and you don't walk in fear, you walk in victory. The testimony of David was not just that God had got him through his trouble. But the testimony of a dying man was God helped me through it and God got me over the wall. We want to just get through things. Lost so much energy. Just try. I'm, I'm so weary. Oh, I got through it. But my God, I'm just so worn out and so beat down. I got through it. I made it through it. Now leave me alone. Because I'm going to carry this stuff. I'm going to talk about it for the next 10 years. I'm going I'm to I'm go around and, and, and I'm, not making, I'm not making light of anxiety. And because anxiety comes out of stuff that God brought, brought you through. You, you, you just, I'm not making light of PTSD. It's very real. But don't you think David had PTSD? Do you know how many people? He, he killed 300 men just to marry a girl. I won't tell you what else he did to him, but read your Bible. You don't think he had PTSD? You don't think when he cut the people's heads off and giants' heads off, you don't think he was all messed up? But his testimony was God got me through it and God got me over it and he filled my heart with praise. God didn't bring you through it without the intention to bring you over it, to get you over it. If God gave you the power to get through it, God will give you the power to get over it. Come on and shout, God can get me over this. He doesn't want it plaguing you the rest of your life. He doesn't want you in shame and beat up for the rest of your life because of what you've been through. You don't have to look like it, talk like it, smell like it, act like it. People should be shocked to know what you've been through because it shouldn't be all over your face and all in your conversation. Woo. Tell your neighbor it's time to get over it. Just when you think you can have a pity party the rest of your life, an old man on his deathbed writes a song of praise and victory just so you won't have no excuses to not just get through it. But he said, I'm telling you, I got through it and then God gave me a leap in my step and I jumped over it. I, I'm over it. I got out of it. The, you see, the walls try to 
their walls of containment, their walls of isolation. He wants you once you go through something because you've been through abuse or you've been through a divorce or you've been through something. He wants you to stay isolated and, and he wants you to stay uh, in, in, in confinement about it, even mentally, confinement about it and little shame and guilt the rest of your life. But in the name of Jesus, there is a, I, I hear the Lord say, I can restore the... I can restore the leap. I can restore, you know, that's what an athlete gets. He gets a little spring of energy. You, you can't leap until you feel that muscle twitch. <laughs> Y'all know what I mean? It's time for some of you to get a restoration. Get your spring back. Get, it's, it's time for some of you to get that, that touch back, that that. He said, the Lord got me over it. He didn't just get me through it. He got me over my two sons' deaths. He got me over my daughter's sexual abuse. You know how dark that is for a parent, for people, to, to hear your daughter was raped? But he said he got me over it. He helped me over my own failure. I messed up with Bathsheba and I didn't let it stop me. I failed and I repented. I fasted and I prayed for the baby to live, but the baby died and I washed my face and I went to the temple and I ministered to the Lord. And I went home and ministered to my wife. Bathsheba was his wife. He got over it. He kept on worshiping. He kept on throwing his hands up. He kept on writing songs. He kept on praising the Lord. If we're not careful, how we handle our trials is how our children will handle their trials. I want my kids, when they see me going through stuff, to see my hands lifted. I want them to see that I still believe, I still worship, I still go to church, I still pay my tithes, I still give God the glory. I don't care what happens. I'm going to praise him because he doesn't just get me through stuff, but if I'll hold on, he'll get me over this thing, and when it's said and done, I'll be more blessed than I was for the devil attacked me. The nine lepers just got through it. But that one tenth leper went back to Jesus and he got over it. A leper is somebody who the, the disease kills the nerves and you can't feel nothing. It attacks the nerves and when the nerves are gone, you can cut your foot. If you've got leprosy in your foot and your leg, you can cut your foot and you can't feel it. You can, you can step on glass, you can burn, you can step on a hot coal and, and be burning and you not even know it because it's a disease that numbs you. The sensory ability is gone because of the trauma that you've been through and you can't feel it. But God wants to give you your feelings back. God wants to give you your joy back. God wants to do more than wash you and forgive you and get you through this bad season that you've been through. He wants to give some things back to you. He wants to give you your peace back. He, wants, he doesn't want you to go through life now that you got through it. You, he didn't just bring you through it to live mangled and messed up. So many Christians get through Horrible things being raised in abusive homes and thanks be unto God. That's why we shouted on the early part of this sermon, thanking. It's not that we're not thankful that he brought us through, but we ought not to stop there. We don't have to live mangled, messed up lives. He said, I got through it. The two word sermon through three two. Well, really, I'll just. Through, over, through, over. I'm really complicating the sermon. I ought to just do that and drop the mic and walk over. I 
I'm waiting on my revelation to catch up with your soul. Tell somebody it's time for you not just to get through it. In your marriage. Y'all had a huge fight because he did something or she did something. And you got through it. But every time you get mad again, you bring it up. <laughs> so you're not over it, honey. God wants you to get over what they said. God wants you to get over what they accused you of. <laughs> God wants you to get over your own failure. Your own failure. Your own failure. He's not holding it over you. It's not the Holy Spirit saying, yeah, I'm glad you're in church and you hear that song. It's a good song. But don't you, don't you get too happy on it because you know you know what you did. That's not the voice of the Holy Spirit. That's the accuser of the brother. God says, by the blood, it got you through it. It didn't kill you. It didn't destroy you. I pushed back the Red Sea, and I let you walk right through it, and now I want you to get over it, and I want you to get a leap in you, and I want you to get a, a spring in your step again about life. Turn to somebody and say, God needs to restore your spark. I'm almost done. David's laying there. He says, God got me over it. And God got me through it. Don't stop halfway. I want this. This is a good. This is a good. How many of you'd like for me to preach this at your funeral? Let me see your hand. Somebody get your pen out and take some names. And when they kill over, I'll remember this. How many of you this? I don't want some old. Wait, we go miss each other. I want something like that at my funeral. He got through it and he got over. It. That's the testimony of loved ones who went through cancer and by God's grace and they got over. There's no defeated Christians. Watch this. Let me close with this. The book of Genesis, I think it's the 49th chapter. There's the story of Joseph and Jacob. Jacob is the father and he's on his deathbed. And he calls in his sons as he's dying. The Bible said he was dying. And he starts blessing and pronouncing a blessing over every one of his sons. And he gets to Joseph. And prophetically, he speaks over him before it ever happens. He says, I see Archer shooting at you. That's his brothers stripping the coat, and throwing him into the pit. That's Potiphar's wife shooting an arrow of accusation, caught, accusing him of rape that he didn't commit. That's Potiphar shooting an arrow and throwing him into prison for 20 years. That's the butler and the baker shooting arrows that they promised they wouldn't forget him and they forgot him. All the stuff that he went through. And this is the prophecy over him as a fruitful vine planted by a well, a vine I see you as a vine that has gone over the wall. You didn't just get through it. Joseph, when you forgive your brothers for what they did to you, you don't just get through it. You get over it. The wall of containment, the wall of isolation that they tried to build the city around you in and keep you he said, you will be like a vine that goes over the wall. You're going to get, you're going to go through it and not become bitter. And then you're going to get over it. I thought about how that after all the plagues that God brought Israel through, and then he brought them through the Red Sea, they got out into the wilderness and the Bible said, 
they begin to say these words. Oh, that we could go back to Egypt. Listen, we got through it. Oh, that we could go back to Egypt because I miss the leeks and the garlics. The onions and the garlic. They couldn't get over onions and garlic. Two of the hardest things to get off of your bread. <laughs> Onions and garlic. Turn to somebody and say, that's something you need to remember. Come on. <laughs> I can tell what you ate last night. <laughs> Onions and garlic all over their breath. You still have halitosis, a breathing bitterness. And God wants to wash out your mouth so that you get over it. So that you don't talk like where you came from. That's why I know cussing ain't right. Because cause when you really get good and saved and filled with the Holy Ghost, you quit cussing. Every once in a while, you think a bad word, but you try not to say it. Amen. And only say it if you're by yourself. I'm not saying I do that, but every once in a while. And when I'm trying to play golf, every once in a while, I think a bad, bad word. But after all God has brought you through, you still got unforgiveness. You still got bitterness on your breath. You still smell like what you've been through. It's all you talk about and regurgitate. God wants to wash out your mouth. Get over it. Spit it out. Hallelujah. Wash it out and spit it out. I like this sermon. Everybody, let's make some confessions. Y'all want to? Say, the wall will not stop me, contain me, hem me in, stymie me. In Jesus' name, I will not be numb in my emotions to me, to others. I will not be numb. I'm getting over it. I'm going to love. I'm going to live. Full days. I'm not bitter. I'm over it. I don't need revenge. I'm over it. I don't need vindication. The blood says I'm over it. No malice in my heart. I'm over it. I will not wither in languish. I'm over it. I'm going to have a song of victory. Just like David. You're going to have a getting over mentality or you're going to have a victimized mentality. It's time to win against the wall. God's brought you through, but it's time to win against the wall. Get over the wall. Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane is, went through something so severe that his, that his sweat became like drops of blood. He was so exhausted. He was so rung out and an angel came and ministered to him. And he got a restoration of that spark for the joy that was set before him. He endured the cross. He said, I'm going through it, but I'm about to get over it on the third day. And that angel came and ministered to him at his point of exhaustion and gave him such a touch that he got that leap, that, that twitch, that muscle twitch. He said, get up now. Finish this thing with joy. Because you're about to get through it and over it. Because that's the kind of God we have. And it's time today to be aggressive and go after not just getting through it, but getting over it. How many of you would like to get over it? 
Not just through it, get over it. I mean, if you're still in it, you'd settle for through it. <laughs> but you're going to get through it. Does this sermon make sense? Get up on your feet. I want every person in this room that you know this is a message for you. And listen, you can do one thing. I want you to listen to me. You can, do, you can do one or two things. You can hear a sermon like this and you can leave just like you came. Or you can step out by faith and, and recognize I've been through it, but I'm not quite over it. And I'd like to have a point where angels come and replenish me and restore that That thing that an athlete feels, right? That he has to feel. He, he, he's running fast, but he has to feel an extra something to get over that, that leap. Leap over a wall. That sounds like victory. I like, I, it didn't say limp. <laughs> try to, try your best to crawl over. Leap. If God could get you through it, God can get you over it. How many of you would like to have God get you over it? Would you get out of your seat and come stand down here this morning? I just, I don't care who you are. I don't care what you've done. I don't care what you've been through. Maybe you're grieving. Maybe you're brokenhearted. Maybe you feel shattered and fragmented mentally. Maybe you have PTSD. Maybe you're filled with anxiety and fear and torment. Maybe you've gone through cancer terrified something's going to come back or you've been through a physical challenge and it's just the enemy's just whispered to you just settle that you made it through it but don't dare think that your family can get over it but we serve a God who makes all things new praise God I like that, uh, that last song you sung. Is that what you're doing? Good. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Every head bowed and every eye closed. I'm going to pray for all of these in just a moment. But if you're here and you'd say, Pastor Jensen, I'm backslid. I'm lost. I'm not right with God. I need a change. I need my sins forgiven. I need the Lord. I, I, I don't want to go through the rest of my life without Jesus being Lord of my life, pray for me. If Whether you're down front or whether you're all over the building, I want to pray for you. But he only comes where he's invited. So invite him this morning into your life at every campus as the pastors are coming. Just invite him. Now, right where you are, here's how you invite him. He said, acknowledge me and I'll acknowledge you. So if that's you and you would say, I need salvation and forgiveness of my sin today, just throw your hand up and let him touch you this morning. I want to pray for you. That's it. Raise those hands on, at every campus. Raise those hands up. Raise those hands up high, unashamed. Keep those hands up. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. So many hands. Pray this prayer out loud. Say, Lord Jesus. Everybody pray. Lord Jesus, wash me. Cleanse me. Thank you for the cross. Thank you that it is well with my soul when I trust you with my future, when I trust you with my past, when I trust you with my present. Lord, you know how to bring me through and get me over. And I receive the victory of the cross. And I receive the victory of the blood. And I receive the victory of the name of Jesus. Right now, I'm forgiven. Right now, I'm going through it, and I thank you I'm going over it. Say this, no more isolation, no more containment in the city of pity. Hallelujah. I'm free in Jesus' name. Now begin to praise him for freedom. Begin to praise him for salvation. Begin to praise him for all that the cross has done for you. Praise him. Those of you down front, lift those hands up and begin to give God praise like David did, that he's brought you through, first of all. Let thanksgiving break out in your heart. He brought me through. 
when I didn't think I had the strength, He brought me through. When I didn't know what I was gonna do, He brought me through. And now, Lord, you're gonna take us over. He's gonna get you over it in Jesus' name. He's lifting you over it. Getting a leap back. Getting that touch back in Jesus' name. Restoration of the spark. Praise God. Praise God. You don't have to be miserable. You don't have to be in a place of sorrow. He wants you to get over it. You never fail. Start praising Him now. Start praising Him now. He's lifting you over. Say, Lord, we just give it to you today. And, and it's not even asking, it's praising Him for what He's brought you through and what He's taken you over. You need to give Him the praise. Don't even ask Him. Start praising Him. I saw the Lord. Yes. conclude this service by doing two things. Number one, every one of you that prayed that prayer of salvation, it is critical that you go by the next steps booth and you tell someone back there. They're going to give you a devotional for the next 21 days. They're going to ask you if you'd like to sign up for water baptism and I'm going to baptize you right here. That's how you get over the past. The answer to a bad past is a good new future. <laughs> and go all the way with God. Don't serve Him halfway. And I believe today, supernaturally, God has set some people free. And you're over it. He's washed your mouth out. Don't talk about it anymore. Turn it into praise. Don't go around telling everybody everything. Just, just praise the Lord. Then I want to challenge you today. I want to challenge you today. We're going to sing one more song. But as you give this week in tithe and offering, we are partnering with a church in Maui that I've preached at many, many, many times through the years. A wonderful, wonderful ministry. Dr. Uh, Morocco is the pastor there, has been for almost 40 years. Great, the, probably the largest church on Maui, no doubt about it. And they're positioned well. Their building is fine. They're on the other side of the island, but they now, just now, are getting access to take all kinds of supplies. And we're going to send them a generous gift and I want to ask you to give, if you'd like to give and be a part of that, give something extra and help us as we minister to the people in Maui. Coming up soon, today is Divine Day. Divine Conference is right around the corner. Women, do you understand we're bringing some of the greatest speakers in the world and music like you wouldn't believe, Charity Gale, if you never heard this young lady, my goodness, and I don't know all the speakers, but they, there's one of them, amen. And there she is. 
she she is amazing and Natalie is amazing and oh my oh Vesta Magnum is coming you've heard me talk she if she's an internet sensation she's 96 years old and can preach the paint off the wall she she is one of the she is without a doubt perhaps the most godly woman you other than my mother you will ever meet and she's going to be right here preaching and she is unbelievable i'm not talking about a good little little talk i'm talking about you've never heard anything like this lady and my god it's going to be unbelievable you must sign up and get registered today and this is the day to do it can't get over the fact that so many people raise their hands and I want you to know the Lord wanted you to hear that sermon to get through it and get over it do you believe that say I'm free I'm free now lift your hand and receive this blessing and I want you to just conclude with the course it is well with my soul so get it in the key whatever you need it raise your hand and receive now and now May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you. May the Lord be gracious unto you. May he lift up his countenance upon you. And may he give you peace. If you prayed that prayer, please go by the next steps. It is well.